Hey guys, Eric here and welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're going to be talking about My Adventures with Superman, Season 2, Episodes 1 and 2. That's right, it was a two-episode premiere, so careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with the season this far. You've been warned. Let's get into it. All right, so I hate to do this, but I kind of have to. I have to do a disclaimer before we start talking about these first two episodes. It's because of how controversial the first season was, particularly with certain people in certain age demographics here on YouTube. There's a lot of people seem to be upset anytime there is an adaptation, a more modern version of classic characters and classic comic books. And I have to say, as somebody who loves all of that older stuff, I love it just as much as you guys do, we have to stop putting up this brick wall and stopping people from making newer adaptations of characters. We have to stop complaining about it. I mean, I really mean this. This is 100% genuine. All of that old stuff that we love is still there. If I want to go back and watch the classic movies, if I want to go back and read the classic comic books and watch the classic cartoons, I can do that. Nothing is stopping me from doing that. It's totally valid to go back and watch those things. But if we pull back the creativity and, and don't allow people to try things and, and, you know, take these leaps with these characters that we love and, and try these things out, we'll never know about the missed opportunities that could happen. And that would have been the case with this series, My Adventures with Superman. So if you're somebody who is still on the fence about this, you're so worried about, oh, nostalgia, give it a shot. It is a very different telling of Clark Kent, Superman, Lois Lane, and this entire world. Some of it works, some of it doesn't, but it's still an entertaining watch, and I think it is a show that you should be giving a little bit of your time to, just to see if you like it or not, okay? And I can't believe it's controversial to say give art a chance. I feel like that shouldn't be controversial, but it is. It's 2024, and it is. Like, apparently, uh, anytime you adapt something, you have to make a million excuses for it. I got news for you. None of the people that made these characters, that drew these characters, are still doing it today. They are no longer doing that. And every time a new writer or a new artist came along to take on this character, regardless if it was like a Elseworlds or a what if, or even a different run of the character, it is an adaptation every single time. So it's not that people are anti-adaptations. It's just that they're anti-modernization of stuff. And um, that simply means they just don't want new people on board and taking on these things. It's like, it's like when we were younger and our parents told us that like hip hop music and rock and roll music would ruin our entire lives. We're still here. Huh, maybe they were right. I want to start out with what I think is one of the biggest pluses for the series, one of the biggest bonuses for tuning in to this piece of art, is Jack Quaid as Clark Kent Superman. I absolutely enjoy the way he expresses emotion through his voice acting with this character. Like, I can't necessarily see him in my mind as Superman or Clark Kent, but in this animation, it just totally works for me. I loved him in season one. He really shines in this uh, two-episode premiere for season two, and I can only imagine just as good throughout the entire season. I suspect he's going to be really good in this. And we kick off the beginning of the first episode with Superman, Clark Kent, having visions based on what happened at the end of last season with the invasion from uh, Krypton, where they had to thwart off all of this awful stuff. They were dealing with Task Force X, Amanda Waller, uh, all of these crazy things in season one. And so now he's having these visions that he doesn't really understand that looks like it has something to do with Krypton, but it also has to do with the invasion and his parents and, and all of this other stuff. It's just, it's kind of this traumatic event for him. And I love that we're doing this more psychological take on Superman. I'm actually kind of surprised we're doing it in animation. I don't think we've had anything quite like this in live action. I, I'm thinking back to like the TV shows, the movies, all that. I don't think we've dealt with the psychological side of Superman as much as the physicality of him or the, you know, him living at home with his parents and stuff. The psychological stuff is extremely interesting to me. And I hope that we go even further with it this season. It seems like they sort of wrap it up a little bit uh, in these first two episodes uh, with him getting the reveal that his father, that he meets his father, but it's just a hologram of, of uh, Jor-El and that, you know, uh, what happened with this planet and how they had to like face off against like this threat that they created themselves. And even though it seems we may not get much more of Jor-El this season, I hope we do because I did like the dynamic we had from them just in the little bit of time they were together on screen. Uh, but this is how they create the Fortress of Solitude. So this is how we're going to have that in this new world, in this animated world, my adventures with Superman is that it is going to be this sort of like really weird 
uh, surrealistic uh, Kryptonian technology that sort of allows him to exist in these floating spaces and things like that. It's actually a really cool visually how all of this sort of works. And I'm wondering, like, if we get deeper and deeper into Kryptonian technology, how much that's going to play into other characters we meet on the series. Let's talk about one of my issues with the first episode. And this is kind of a nitpick, which is what I do if you've watched my rant and reviews in the past. Sort of a nitpick. Um, I know this is animation and things have to move at like a different pace. Each episode is like 23 minutes long. But one of the things that did kind of annoy me is how quickly Amanda Waller and her team were able to find the facility that they were at. Even though, you know, we had Jimmy and Lois there with Clark, it's just like they were able to get in and, and you know, obviously the technology inside of the ship, the fortress had to fight back against them. I just felt like it was a very quick way to sort of make it happen. And logistically for me, that's kind of an issue. But then the, the practical side of me knows that like this is the way the cartoon has to work because they don't have a lot of time. And ultimately it didn't have much effect on the overall storyline, but I'm like, like they really got in there super easy. And also Deathstroke. I, I, I'm still not totally sold on this version of Deathstroke. Um, I didn't mind them in the first season because it was such a completely different version of the character, but it feels like they're trying to get closer and closer to the Deathstroke that we know from the comics, the one that we've known over the years. And maybe eventually it'll get to that point where it feels like Deathstroke to me. But it just does it, and uh, you know, again, I'm willing to give it a shot because I, I'd like to see where it's going to go. But right now, it's in that transitional phase where I'm not totally 100% on board with it, but at the same time, I'm not like 100% against it. So we'll have to wait and see how that happens. I was also really excited to see Star Labs introduced so early in the season with a character named Hank, who's a friend of Lois, who. I don't know if that character is someone from the comics. As much as I know about comics, I'm more of a Marvel guy than a DC guy when it comes to the comic book stuff. With DC, I'm more of like the animation stuff. But I just don't remember this character, Hank, from Star Labs. So if anybody knows who this is supposed to be, if it is in fact a character from the comics, let me know in the comments below. Um, I would appreciate it greatly if somebody could enlighten me on who Hank is. Anyway, uh, this whole thing was set up because they thought there was going to be a meteor, but then it was actually like the ship. And so uh, Clark started having these, these visions, these flashbacks. I really hope that that kind of continues through the season where we're dealing with more of this like psychological trauma. Cause as much as I hate seeing a super bad, I, I guess tortured is probably the best word for that. As much as I hate seeing him tortured by all of this stuff, I do think it makes the character more interesting from a, like a viewership perspective because we get to see him like do all of this cool stuff where he's flying around, punching stuff, throwing things around, uh, doing all the stuff we see Superman do. But then you, when you want to see Superman vulnerable, it has to be done in a way that feels smart. And I think psychologically is really kind of the smartest way to do it. Let's talk a little bit about Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen in this series, which has been kind of one of the biggest points of contention when I see people complaining about this is that Lois Lane is not, sexy and attractive enough she's too boyish as if lois lane had never had short hair before <laughs> in the comic books or the cartoons as if lois lane is never dressed androgynously or uh, you know wearing slacks and jeans and a jacket or whatever it's really this weird sort of like i nitpick but that seems like a weird thing to nitpick it's it's as if people have never paid attention to lois lane over the years there's been so many different versions of lois lane with long hair with short hair lois who feels like she wants to show off her curves more. The other side of Lois where she's more of like just a go-getter and she doesn't really care about looking sexy or whatever. I think it's a really weird complaint to have because I actually like this Lois. I think that this Lois is, is the right balance of like charm, but also annoyance, which I think leans really good into like the dynamic of Clark and Lois. Um, one of the things we deal with this season is her father missing because she doesn't know where he is. He's not returning calls. He's not, she's not seeing him anywhere. Um, he's just been gone since all this stuff happened back at the you know end of season one. And so it ends up that after following through all this investigative stuff, they find the facility where he's being held and she goes in with Superman to rescue him. He doesn't want to be rescued. Um, he's got an issue with Superman, obviously has an issue with Clark because of Lois. And so because of this, it leads to this banter between them when they're trying to break him out of the facility that Amanda Waller has him held in. And ultimately, they do manage to get him out along with a bunch of people that were being held and locked up because they met a kid earlier 
whose father was missing. And so Superman is kind of like investigating all the stuff that's going on. So it's kind of like a two, three fold type situation. Uh, but one of the things that kind of leans into the annoyance of Lois here, because it is quite annoying, is that at the end of the second episode, when all this resolution happens, she offers to have her dad stay with Clark, who has a secret identity, which would make it very awkward for her dad and, and Clark in that situation. And it just seems like an oversight that doesn't feel necessary. Um, it's literally there just to cause conflict between Clark and her father. And I did not really appreciate that. But that leans into that annoyance thing with Lois. But I think she's a lot smarter than that. So I don't know why she would even offer that. But we'll have to see where they go with that story um, down the road. As far as Jimmy goes, Jimmy has the flame bird thing. He's rich now because of uh, all this money he got from Daily Planet. And so that storyline is kind of happening. Jimmy grew on me over last season. I didn't initially like him early in the show. But then as the season went on, I kind of understood who the character is. And so I know if you're coming into the show fresh and you did not watch season one, you're probably going to be like, he's a very annoying character. But that's the I think that's the point of the character. There's a charm because he's sort of like the sort of conspiracy theory guy that everybody knows. And so um, that's sort of the angle they're playing with him. And we'll see where he goes further with this because there seems to be a push about this social media thing and a social media team. And I don't know how that's going to work out for the season. I don't even know if it's the most interesting thing to me on the show. but. We will see if he ends up changing as a character, if he grows as a character, or if they just keep him in the same spot all the way through the season like they did in season one. I'd like to see him grow as a character, but I also know that would remove some of the charm he has as being just the guy hanging out with them. And we'll see where that goes. I do want to talk about a couple of characters that were introduced in these two episodes. I believe they were introduced. I don't remember them from the first season. Uh, but we get the character of Damage, who is very different from the one in the comics. The one in the comics looked more creature-like, more like a, I want to say a ripoff of the Hulk. But, like, you know, it did not look like a human being. Like, the character of Damage, when transformed, looked very alien-like. Um, so this version is more, like, tech-based. He does inflate like his body ridiculously, as you can see in this picture. And his arms are like these giant uh, pieces of Kryptonian tech that he's using here to fight Superman. It's it's a funny thing, but it was cool. It was super anime, which is kind of like almost all the villains have been super anime um, in, in the series. Uh, but this was Damage. And uh, yeah, it just kind of a big brawler character um, that we got to meet. Now I want to talk about one of the coolest characters visually we've had on the show, and that is the Atomic Skull. Now, this character, again, very reminiscent of like other characters in the past. I don't have to mention any names. Uh, not a new character at all. Been around for a very long time. We've seen other iterations of this character. We get to see them face off against Superman, um, who is, you know still dealing with sort of everything that's happening. You know, it's Valentine's Day. He's got that on his mind. Uh, so he's worried about that, his date with Lois, all the stuff with Lois's father, saving all these people. Um, also wearing on his mind is the fact that he has been told now he has a cousin who we know is going to be Supergirl. We know that she's going to be coming this season. And so that's part of his journey is to find his cousin and sort of uh, build some sort of relationship with her and, and see kind of who she is. Is she going to be sort of like she is in the comic, more of a headstrong character who doesn't want to listen to anybody and does kind of what she wants to do? Or is she going to be more of like the version we knew from other iterations? Is she going to be more like Supergirl from the TV show? We have no idea. I really hope they take it in a different direction. They've really pushed the show so hard going other places that I want to see a Supergirl that feels unique to this world that isn't just a copy of another Supergirl that we've had before. Uh, but anyway, Love Damage. I uh, thought it was really funny and uh, Atomic Skull, again, very anime. Deathstroke, very anime. And um, they get busted. So when, uh, or Amanda Waller gets busted here because as everyone's trying to escape, she wants to take them out. But then they show up with cameras, filming, people get out. And, um, you know, they're left with this. Overall, I really enjoyed this two episode premiere. Again, these are shorter episodes. I know in the world of animation recently, we've had episodes that are much longer. Um, I say much longer, a, a little bit longer than my adventures with Superman. These episodes are like 20 to 23 minutes long. So they're not that long, uh, but I absolutely enjoy them. I think the artwork has been elevated since season one. It looks a lot cleaner, crisper. The colors are bright. 
Uh, the characters, even though they are different adaptations of versions that we know, they feel very true to who they are. And I'm really excited for where the story is going to go this season. The big stinger we get at the end is that now Lex Luthor is in, is in play and he's going to be working with Amanda Waller. So we are going to be dealing with a version of Lex that I have no idea what he's going to be like. It is a much younger version. He kind of uh, stutters when he goes to say his name. He almost says Alexander, but then he goes with Lex. So I think we're seeing like the beginnings of this world's Lex Luthor which is exciting to me to bring in that character. I also want to point out that the creative team behind the show doesn't seem intent on bringing Batman any, anytime soon, according to them. So I don't know if we're going to see that character ever um, on the show because we don't know how long the show is going to go on. Uh, but I want to see more classic characters from Superman that we have not seen before. I don't mind Lex. Don't mind characters like Brainiac and Lex and stuff. We're going to get those. But like bringing in, like we saw Damage and then we had Atomic Skull. Like I would love more characters like that throughout the season. And I do have a feeling they're going to do that. They're going to bring those through for us. So if I was scoring these first two episodes, right, we're bringing scores back now. If I was scoring these first two episodes, they're both even to me in terms of entertainment, which is what I'm judging them on. And I would give both of them around a seven and a half, almost an eight almost at eight but we'll say a high seven and a half uh, for the first two episodes i don't like to give anything early on like a 10 out of 10 because i always feel like there's going to be something better in the season and i don't want to start out with such a high bar and then have to drag it down low but i have faith in the show i'm really enjoying it so now it's your turn to let me know did you enjoy the first two episodes of my adventures with superman let me know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel leave a like under this video and hang out with us here in the Ericverse. we have a great community where we go live and chat every single week and i'd love to have you there so come and join us see you in the next video